Okay, hi everybody, welcome to TradingTheMarkets.com, the trading alert service using the volume spread analysis sequential uh, trade setups. Um, it's now 12.02 uh, p.m. in uh, London, it's the 2nd of December, and you're with uh, Gavin Holmes, I'm the author of Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money. I know we've got lots of new people who are here, um, who may not have seen what we do before, so just very briefly, um, I'll explain it to you. Many of you um, are already members of our alert service called TradingTheMarkets.com. Now, TradingTheMarkets.com was launched 18 months ago, and we provide trade alerts on various instruments when we see key VSA principles. Now, the one that I'm going to talk to you about right now is an alert that we sent out, or the team sent out yesterday. You can see the date and the time. If we access the alert, you can hear what we were looking for. Switch this up. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to play it all to you because you probably can't hear it. But but you know we were seeing weakness in the Australian dollar cross pair. Okay, that's the Australian dollar versus the British uh, uh, be against the US dollar. I beg your pardon. You can see I said here in both the FX market and the futures market, supply was hitting. And what we said to look out for here, as you can see, is look for the upthrust, look for no demand bars, which I'm going to show you and explain to you in a minute. And again, my initial target is down here at 0.8400, okay? And that's where I think this will still go to. Now, if we actually look at where we're currently at, we're only 42 ticks away from the target, but we have got some potential buying coming in on this bar here. So I'm going to move my stop down just above here in a second to protect $140 of the trade. Okay, that's how I'm scalping this. Now we've also got a very interesting potential setup on the Canadian dollar as well, which, which I'm going to explain to you shortly. Um, and what we're seeing here, let's explain to you the Australian dollar trade. Now first of all, I just for transparency purposes, I want to show you that we trade a live account. This is my Infinity AT futures account. The account number is 4855. Okay, it's funded with 5,000 US dollars. All right, and that's that's what we have. So we don't trade the big account in this trading room. I have five different accounts that I trade. Uh, this one we do publicly to show you how we can manage risk and how we can take trades which we consider to be high probability low risk. Now this trade that I took, I sent an alert out several hours before I actually positioned myself in, 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 in the trade itself. Now you're going to see red indicators coming in. We just had one 10 minutes ago here. Okay, and if we take out 8439, the next target is 8430, 0.8430. But it's got to take out that 8 0.8439 uh, level. Now I'm watching here on the trading dome, um, uh, when the big orders start to come in, you'll start to see this here go to 20, 50, 100, and that's what I call the smart money. That means they're, they're coming active. And hello Darren, good to see you mate, nice to see you, I hope you're well. So in this alert that we did, there was a reason we sent this short alert to, out. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this now. I'm going to bring my stop down here to lock in some profit, okay, so now I've already locked in some profit on the trade. So if this buying responds and pops up, okay, and if it goes above this level here, about 8.541 actually, just right here, that's where it is, then I'll get uh, filled for a profit, okay. You can see here, I don't ignore the signals, because here they're telling me that they're testing the market, and if they want to market back up, I don't want to be losing money. My, the idea of this trading room is that we make profits, okay? So we don't like to take losses in this room. We do occasionally have losses, but not very many. Over the last few months, I've been relatively conservative with the trades. Now, let me explain the setup to those of you that are actually new. Now, first of all, we're going to go to the bigger time frame, okay? We'll start with the daily chart. Now, let me ask you all a question, especially if you're new, you can type this in. What is the trend of price in this Aussie dollar contract? What do you think? Um, hello, Jamie. By the way, I saw your email. 
about those uh, UK stocks last week, Jamie. I'll take a look at them today if you can remind me which ones they are. Uh, that won't be a problem, mate. Um, I was just I was out in Bulgaria. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, which is why I've been away, but I'm I'm back now. Okay. So first of all, what we notice about this daily chart, it's in a downtrend and it's making lower lows each day. Okay. So what I know is we're making lower lows and we have a serious sign of weakness on the daily chart, which as the market's trying to go up away from it, it's getting slammed with sell orders. Look here. Look at the volume. Slammed with sell orders. Okay. Up here, sell orders. And Philip Friston, I'll make him an organizer in a minute, will, will point out that in fact, on some of the time frames, the weakness last night appeared right at the top of the downtrend channel, which is exactly where you want to see it. Uh, yeah, Richard, we'll look at um, uh, Thomas Cook. I think, uh, in fact, Philip, can I ask you, because I know you've got the UK stocks there, if you wouldn't mind having a look at Thomas Cook for us uh, in a minute. I'll make you an organiser in a second. In fact, let me do that now, just so you, you're an organiser. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, Philip Friston is a fund manager who uses volume spread analysis. He's based in England. Um, he's a very good trader. He's been trading for nearly 25 years with VSA. So he's very experienced. And Philip, I've just made you uh, an organizer. So just bear with me a second while I am. Um, you can do a sound check in a minute. Let me just finish my thoughts here, if I can, uh, on this Aussie dollar. So we can see we're, we're definitely trending down. Now, if I draw a trend line on this daily chart from the first high where the weakness is to the second high, you can clearly see here. In fact, I can actually move this back to there, and you'll get a very nice trend channel on the daily chart so we can see where we're going. Right there. And I'm going to put my center lines on. Boom. Look at that for a lovely trend line. Okay. So I can see that this is where we made our first low. We made a secondary low. We've made a third low. Now, I trade in the direction of the trend. That's my priority. And if the biggest trend, which I'm looking at for, for Forex and, and currency futures, is the daily chart, I can see that we've hit the top of the chain channel. We've had a very clear, what I call hidden upthrust on high volume. And we've gone up. And every time the market tries to go up, look at where the prices close. We close in the middle here. That's not good for higher prices. And so we know here markets don't like ultra high volume. And if we look at the low of this bar, it's at 8409. And that is where the market's going to come and retest probably today, which is why I'm sure. Now, if we look at the Trade Guider software, there's a beautiful example of how the email alert system works. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with that, I'll show it to you. I get my trades from the email alerts, and if you have a look at these, you're going to see here an email alert that came in for the Canadian dollar, okay, only about half an hour, what was that, 45 minutes ago for one of my favorite setups. Now, we've got to wait for a test, but we've actually got bag holding on the Canadian dollar. That's a very big VSA principle. So we're going to go and have a look at that um, in a minute and see what, what it tells us. Now, going back to the Australian dollar, let me finish my, my thoughts on that. So first of all, I'm going to look at the trending system in Trade Guide. And this is also, by the way, built into other trading platforms. And you're going to see that the diamonds are predominantly red in all of these time frames. Now, now what that looks like in the infinity charting package, and I'm going to have to probably reopen uh, infinity charts. So let me go and do that in a second, but I'll do that now. Just bear with me. I'm just going to go and open it on my other computer here so you can see it. Okay, so just bear with me. Ah, Dan, <laughs> because there's a lot of new people here, um, I expected that question, Dan, and I'll answer it for you in a second. It's a good question. So let me let me answer it for you. Dan, Dan has asked the question, how could this work in spot forex if, there, if there's no volume? Great question. I'm glad you asked that. Because um, I was asked that in Bulgaria last week. Uh, we were at the uh, show in Bulgaria 
In fact, while we're while we're waiting for the data to come in, uh, I can show you. So you should be able to see a picture here. This is um, a conference with Mark Barton from Bloomberg. It's very likely that finally I'll get onto the television to talk about market manipulation because it's something of interest. And this whole seminar was all about um, how the markets uh, um, move. And it's a, it was a forex forum, but it was also talking about investing in the markets. Okay, so let me just go and quickly look at the chart here. Okay, perfect. So yeah, let me just show you some of the um, things. This was called Investor Forex Forum. It was in Sofia. In, in Bulgaria, and I was that was me on the right. I was talking about um, how the markets and how volume is the indicator for professional traders. Now you can see here we had over nearly 400 traders from all over Bulgaria, and in fact from further afield. And I was showing them uh, what the smart money is. Who who are the smart money? How do they operate? And how do we know when professional money are moving the market? And what I was able to do was take some live trades at this event because it was on Friday. And again, I was able to short the Australian dollar. Okay, and, and, and the principles on the Aussie dollar at the moment are so clear, I've made more winning trades in this contract in the last two weeks than any of the others, which is why I sent the alert out uh, uh, yesterday. You can see there was a lot of speakers at the actual event. Um, in fact, we had uh, this gentleman, um, Al Brooks from America speaking, and uh, I was very pleased to be able to do some live trading, which was great. In fact, this was actually the chart, you can probably see it here, of, of the setup. And uh, we made $600 in 45 minutes on, on this particular trade, and the reason it was high probability is what I'm going to show you right now. Now, if we go to the 4-hour chart, you're going to see a great setup in VSA. Okay, and the reason yesterday I sent you an alert to go short was what was happening on these bars here. Now remember what I asked you to look out for. Okay, I asked you to look out for an up thrust, and that's what it looks like. Okay, remember this was in a downtrending market, but I had to be patient before I jumped in on my trade because you don't want to go against an up thrust because an up thrust is a sign of weakness. We can see this is a live chart now. We only look at live charts in the trading room. We don't use historical data, we use the live charts, and it's very likely we're going to see a signal called no demand on this four hour chart, very likely, which means it will drift up on very low volume, confirming all this weakness that's in the background. Now, if we read the dialog box, it tells us this indicator is the next bar for confirmation. All right, so this bar is marked up, but falls off rapidly to close on or near its low normally with an average to wide spread. Now, when we refer to volume spread analysis, let's be clear, the software is looking at the volume, the high and the low of the bar, and the closing price on that bar. Okay. Now, what is interesting here is that this volume I'm getting is what we call exchange traded volume. It's coming from the CME group. However, I'm now going to show you the other volume that I use for Forex, which is called tick volume. Okay, let me put the two charts up together and you'll see why volume works. Now this is exchange traded volume on the 6A Australian dollar currency futures contract. Okay. Now, Dan, you asked the question, this is tick volume, which is available in MT4, because I also use that platform, and it's got exactly the same signal as we've got in the exchange traded contract. So this is actually volume that's coming from GTIS, which is an e-signal data feed, and all it's done is it's taken the activity of 200 banks and watched what their orders are doing and produced activity volume. And that's all you need to worry about with Spot Forex. We're getting activity volume on the chart. And we know on all that activity, which was very high on this four-hour chart, the market closed near the low of the bar. Now, for those of you who are in Bulgaria, remember what I said last week, that weakness appears 
when you get these type of bars appearing. Now you can see the market's doing almost an identical thing. This is the spot. This is the currency futures contract. Okay. Now when a market is weak in a downtrend, professional money has to sell as the market goes up. They can't sell as it goes down too fast, otherwise they lose money, which is why we have these weak bars. Now, Tony's observing here. Um, hello, Premise Law. Nice to see you. Um, the volumes are going to differ because they're different from different places. This is exchange traded volume from the CME group. This is tick volume. They're completely different, but they look identical in many ways. You can see here that the volume here is very high on the spot forex market. On this particular currency futures contract, it's not as high, but it's having exactly the same effect on price. And that's all we're interested in. That is, that's all we're interested in. It's doing, and it always will do the same thing. The market, if it's being marked up in the spot market, will also have exactly the same happen in the currency futures contract. Is there any question so far? Yeah, and my colleague Darren here in the room is just mentioning that in the VSA club, which if you're a trading the markets member, you get access to that club. There is many, 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 many um, webinars and, and information on what I'm showing. But this proves, I'm sorry, beyond any reasonable doubt, that exchange traded volume in the currency futures market can also be seen in the spot forex market. Because if they mark the price up, which they tried to do here, in the currency futures market, they did exactly the same thing in the spot forex market. And if you go and check your MT4 platform, you'll see it'll be the same. And that is why volume spread analysis works. And, of course, we took a trade in here, as you can see. And, this, and I took the trade not in the spot forex market, although I could have. I took it in the currency futures contract. All right, and so now my trade is uh, at break even. I'm ten ticks away from the market, and if it breaks the 39 level, right, it will move to 8430 very quickly because I'm using something called a point and figure chart. Okay, now this is known as scalping. I've only been in this trade about an hour and 15 minutes, not very long. Okay, so so far I'm $200 up, but I'm letting it run. I'm giving it room to breathe because overall the market looks weak. We've got to take out this eight, um, 0.8439 level, and we'll see if we actually do that. Um, okay, a lot of questions coming in. Um, right, Steve is saying, what would stop you entering on the fourth full bar from the left? The fourth full bar from the left. Um, so you're talking about, well, well let's try, let's, let's look at the currency futures, because that's what I traded. So we're starting with one, two, three, four. You, now, which one do you mean here? Uh, Steve, look at the time at the bottom. That's a midday bar. That's a three o'clock bar, eight o'clock bar. So which one do you actually mean? The three a.m. bar or this one here? That one here. Right. Well, actually, you could have entered a short based on that time frame. You, it would be nothing wrong with that. But I use multiple time frame analysis. I don't just use one time frame. So how I actually entered the trade, I'll show you how I entered it. I use the hourly chart to look for what we call a change in behavior. Did we have the diamonds turning red? Because I don't like to go short when this can happen. You notice the bars are blue, the diamonds are green in our software. None of them have turned red yet on the hourly chart. So I have a rule that says I must see at least a couple of red diamonds. But I, I use the 15 minute and the five minute to get my entry. Um, here, if we look at the 15 minute chart, you'll see very clearly where the market changed behavior. First of all, they have a whipsawing motion, and we go up to resistance here, and we've got no demand. What does that mean? No interest from professional money. However, this is just a warning sign. Remember, I'm looking for the market to change trend. Then we get what we call supply hitting the market here, number seven. But the market for 15 minutes continued to go up, so I couldn't short there. I'm just aware that professional money are selling. Here, I have a lovely reaction to the weakness. It's slammed down very rapidly, closes on the low. Now here, for a whole hour, I'm being warned with these white diamonds 
but the market's changing behavior. Now these bars here are what we call tests. Because they're green, we don't go long, because a test can fail. You've got to read the dialog boxes. We've got weakness in the background, so these tests are telling us at this particular juncture, the market is becoming weak. Now, if you then go down to a smaller time frame, you get clear, clear principles appearing. Here, the diamonds are all red, okay? The bars are all red. So here I know we're trending lower. This is what I call in my book, if you've read my book, and if you haven't, I'll give you a copy. This is called a gotcha bar, a widespread down bar. Now, yes, the software is picking up some stopping volume, but that does not mean the indicator's wrong. It did stop the market for about half an hour. But I know, because of the bigger trend in place, the daily chart is down, the four hour chart is down, and the hourly chart is showing a lot of weakness, that this market has become weak. And if we look, on the three minute chart, you get multiple VSA principles. You're seeing them right now as we speak at the right edge of the chart. There's no demand, which confirms my thought that will break the 8439 level. There's an up thrust. Here's another up thrust here. Okay, and they're in the right place, these signals, because you can see the markets falling and responding to them. And people often don't realize with VSA, this is the reason, this is the start of the distribution. Look at the volume on that bar. That was done quite deliberately, but because of momentum of price, the price continued to go up. But now, I'm not thinking of any longs until I see that volume coming in at the right edge of the chart. And I've got a target of 0 0.8400, yeah, 0 0.8400, which is part of the trade alert. Um, Okay, let's, there's loads of chart. I can't, I've got so many hundreds of you in here because we opened it up to the public today. I'm not going to answer every single question. I'll do my best. Um, Jeff says, could VSA get you into trade on the spot but not the futures? Very, very rarely. I've never, in fact, no, I would say. I've never seen that. If the future is giving setups to the short side, you can guarantee the spot will as well. Um, let me show you. AUD space A0 dash FX comma three. So here, here's your weakness look. This is a spot forex chart. I tend to find in the spot forex you don't get as many indicators coming in, which is why I use both. But they're going in the same direction, you see. You can pick up the weakness here in the spot. But the reason I put the two together is I get more entries by seeing the currency futures trades because of the way VSA works. You can see I've got multiple entries, but of course the market's going in the same direction. These charts almost look identical to each other. Okay, so that answers that question. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Jeff says, am I trade generally short term? No, they, they vary. In the live trading room, Jeff, they tend to be short term mainly because people don't want to sit here watching me in a swing trade that I might be in for six, six weeks. It's not very entertaining. Um, and remember, a lot of these live trades that we take are based on principles in the futures markets where you can make money in, in, in 20, 30 minutes. You don't have to be in the trade and exposed to the market for a long time. But actually, I'm short crude oil on a swing trade position from, from $84. Um, and in fact, I'll talk about the trade alert we sent out six weeks ago on that particular instrument because it's proven to be quite um, prophetic. Now, if we look at, um, okay, good, a couple of you saying you, you get this, okay. How many different types of narrative can appear, says Jeff, in the dialogue boxes? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by how many, but if you're talking about how many languages, we've got them in seven different languages at the moment. Um, and basically, every single indicator, there's over 300 indicators, has a number, okay, in, 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 in the, it says there's an up thrust, and then it, you just have, this is how you learn VSA, you read the dialogue boxes. That, that, that's all we're going to do, we're going to read the dialogue boxes, and they're going to tell us what we need to know. Let's have a look here at the last dialogue box that just came in here. Okay, we can read it. This is no demand, it's an up bar with volume less than the previous two bars as the market rises. Let's have a quick look and see if that's correct, yes? It's an up bar with volume less than the previous two bars. So that's absolutely correct. Okay. Study the background carefully and look at the trend. 
This indicator works best when there's weakness in the background or following a minor sign of strength in the downtrend. With strength in the background, the indicator alone carries less significance. The next bar should be down. Now, the next bar in this case is actually looks like it's closed level. That's okay. We're going to see if the market takes out the 8439 level, which is a key level, which it's already tested down here, look. It tried to come down and it responded. It came back down again to the 844. So we can see where the, they're holding the price here. Professional money, I've not broken that level yet. If it breaks, it'll do it very quickly. You, you might see that live. Um, okay, let me just see the rest of these questions. Darren says, you would normally have your trigger on an ultra high volume bar also, which you have taught me to use as a trigger into the trade, yeah? Okay, uh, Premise Lab says, uh, don't, you, don't, you don't try to catch the top and the bottom. No, no, I don't try to catch the top and the bottom. I try to catch a piece of the action within the trend. What I know is I've taken a reasonably good, well, I've taken nearly 20 ticks out this trade in, in the last hour and 20 minutes. Now they're testing the market, okay? Now, if this test fails, meaning we break the low of the bar through 8439, this will confirm everything we're seeing. But remember, there is uh, some support come in here. Okay, that's why the market is moving sideways. And why for the last, uh, this is a three minute chart, for the last, what, nearly hour, it's moved in a very tight range, which is why I brought my stop into profit. I can't lose money on this trade. Okay, and as long as I get a fill, I can't lose money on this trade. I've covered my commissions, which is my priority. And now if it breaks the 8439 level, I think the next level will be the target I gave in the trade alert, which is 0 0.8400. Okay. Um, okay, I will have a look at the Japanese yen. I'll look at the others as well. Uh, yeah, the ruble is weak because of what's happening in crude oil, Jamie. That's, that's the reason it's weak. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do crude oil in a minute. Yeah. Okay, Wajudin, um, can you contact AJ in support? He'll be able to help you. Um, no problem. Steve says, uh, why are there various color volume bars? Yeah, okay, what, and what do they mean? They basically, uh, what we've got, if I explain to you the volume histogram, which is the, the easiest one to read, these are measuring what we call ultra-high volume, in, and the, the software will actually, if you've got the software or one of our plugins, it will tell you what the bar is you're analyzing. In this one, it gapped down on ultra high volume and a fairly wide spread. Here, it tells you the volume is average. Here, it tells you the volume is high. The reason it's colored black is it's closed level with the previous bar, so it covers the volume black. So wherever you get a level close, you can see here that we know that there's, there's weakness. Now, here we go. Now we've gone. That was really quick. Now, I said this would happen. Now, let's I've got to, I might have to chase this now, so let's uh, make sure I'm, I'm in ready for this. So this is what I expected. If we're going to break that key level, which we've now broken, this could move very quickly. And again, what I'm going to want to do is, um, is make sure I, I, I lock in some more profit now on the trade. Yeah, sorry, the Russian ruble. That's what I, I don't know what I said there. I mean the Russian ruble, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to watch this carefully. Okay, now we've got to that 38 level. My stop is going to come down now, because that is now a key level, to the 42 level, all right, which now is just underneath here. And whatever happens here, I'm going to make around $190 on the trade, which I'm perfectly satisfied with. If it runs now, and we get this real runner, um, this could be a three or four hundred dollar trade, and my risk, John, was sixty U.S. dollars. I had a six tick stop. Um, sorry, I beg your pardon. It started off um, with a seventeen tick, tick stop. I then moved it to nine ticks. I then moved it to break even, and I then moved it to profit. And that's how I trade. I always try to to lock in the profit where I can on the trade. Huh. Gregory said it's not just weak; it's very weak on this chart. That's why we sent the alert out. Absolutely. Okay, so we're just going to follow this through for the moment. But that is why if you see no demand in a downtrend, the next bar was level. Look at the volume. Then they test it. It fails. That's a failed test. This could very easily hit that target today. 
could very easily do that at the US Open. But whatever happens, I can always take some profit and get back into the trade. That's why trading is all about ensuring there's no stress. You're just doing what the market's telling us. It's telling us it's weak. Look at the red signals and look at the red colored bars. That's weakness, guys. That's what it is. The chart is not frozen. No. Nope. No. Nope. No, you can see it's ticking here and it's ticking here. It's just that they're holding this price level is key. This 8438 level where it's now here is a key support line. It's, and I think it'll break here. I'm not concerned. I think they'll, because look at the volume coming in. You can see I'm watching the number of orders that's coming in at this level on the trading ladder here. <coughs> yeah, it does, Jamie. That's exactly what they'll do. If there's a support level, the professionals hold the price there for a while, see what's coming through. But what we'll see, if it breaks through 38, you'll see a lot of orders coming in down here. Now, for those of you um, from the uh, London event last week, from the Round the Clock Trader event, and can I just ask, if I may, just type in yes, uh, how many of you here are from the Round the Clock Trader event that we that we did last week? Can I just ask how many of you were at the Round the Clock Trader event? I also traded this contract as well. Oh, okay, quite a lot of you. Okay, good. Now, look, we've got a sign of strength coming in, all right? Right on the level where I expected the market to come down to, right? That's the level I said we'd find some support. So I'm not ignoring the signal, but I'm not going to buy the market here, but we might well see... Um, a, a pop up in price here and I may get filled which I'd be perfectly happy with but if this next bar goes up on very low volume it could break that 8438 level but I suspect we're going to find that, that this level here will, will get tested So when you see a green signal, ladies and gentlemen, in a downtrend, don't immediately rush in and think, oh, I'm going to buy the market here. I found the bottom. You haven't. Right? All it's telling me is there is an effort to hold the market up. But actually, if this fails, meaning this bar goes to 8436, then, then this, this will run nicely. But I'm not ignoring the signal, which is why I'm now stop is in profit. It's not even at break even anymore. And I'm, I'm going to cover my trade. Steve says, why if the following bar has a higher close, is the bar still red? Because actually, here, I'm using a different trending system, Steve. If I switch this off, you can see that it colors down bars red, up bars blue, as we can see, level bars black. That's built into the software. It's also built into the plugins. I'm using the trending system that averages over several bars. So it sees up bars like this. But if they're on low volume, it remains red. It's telling me that the market here has changed. Um, there we go. I just got filled. Okay, so there you go. So the signal is absolutely right. So I did the right thing there by pulling out because I know that 0.8438 was key support. Now, I may be able to jump back in short at a higher price. And that's how you trade the VSA. Remember, if you're looking for up bars, down bars, and level bars, you can switch this on and you can see very clearly that the up bars have been going up on very low volume. There's a level bar look. There's an up bar, colored blue, on very low volume. Now we've got an up bar responding to the stopping volume, which is the highest volume bar since this bar over here. So I would expect here possibly the market to push up seven or eight ticks. I don't ignore the principles and nor will you. Hello, Sam. Nice to see you. Great. Any questions at all about that trade there so far? So that's the first trade there on the Aussie dollar for the day. We will get more, and we're very likely going to get a trade on, on crude oil as well. But I'll just, I'll just take any questions before I move sharps. Okay, so the platform I'm using there, um, Filippo, is the Infinity AT charts. That's my account number. Okay, it's a 5,000 US dollar account. 
and we aim to try to add 10% to the account in each trading session. Um, and we've been fairly successful at that. If I saw another principle here, I would probably go short. I, I'm just aware now that they may test this level, and we may, again, that's what I'd look out for, but I still think if it gets through 8438 and 8437, then it, will, then, it, then it will be confirmed weakness. In fact, I may well put an order in here. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to be patient. I don't think I have to, to rush in. Um, Jamie, I don't have a chart of the Russian ruble, unfortunately, but I do have a chart of the, um, of the crude oil, which is linked in to what's going on with the ruble. All right, so I'll talk about the trade alert on crude oil in a second. I'm just waiting for some questions to come in. Steve says, have I ever traded the pre-market US equities? I only trade the equities when the market's open, and I do hold positions overnight, Steve, and I am holding several positions in US equities at the moment, um, where I've actually been positioned uh, long for some time, but I've got protective stops in on those. Uh, Jerry, no, you, you can use uh, NinjaTrader as well. That's absolutely fine. Um, we, the um, add-in studies that we have, uh, the, re the reason that I'm using the uh, Infinity platform and I'm using the in Infinity charts is simply because I've traded with them for 14 years with the Infinity platform. So, and I've never, ever had a problem. And I've never had an issue with bad slippage or fills where I know there was a lot of problems last year with, with, with NinjaTrader. A lot of issues, a lot of our customers were very unhappy, they were writing to me. So um, that's the reason I use the Infinity platform. And also I get the email alerts coming in from Infinity. I will put a link up shortly, by the way, for those of you in Bulgaria and for those of you who also, um, well in fact for any of you that are interested, if you want to download the Infinity platform and the data for free for, 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 um, for 30 days, I've got a link for a free trial for you. Okay, now that doesn't come with the VSA signals in it. But you can get those because we've got a special promotion running at the moment. There's a 50% off. Now, we're testing this level right now. So that's very, very important. Good. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening there, uh, Darren. They're just gunning for a few stops here. Right, so I wouldn't expect... I, I expect this to actually test, which they're doing. It may even upthrust, which would be even better, and then we can go short again. I wouldn't be long, absolutely not. No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't want to go long here. I, I'd want to wait for a key principle like this, here, like this, like these, and then look for, it, it's weak. This market is definitely weak. I still think we'll achieve our goal. All right, let's go and have a, a look at the last alert that I actually did. Okay, and this alert is for crude oil, so just bear with me. Okay, I'm getting some trade alerts coming in, so bear with me. Got to go and have a look at these. And then I'm going to bring Philip Friston in, and he'll have a look at a couple of UK stocks. And Philip, if you could have a look at gold as well for us, because you I know that's very close to your heart as it is mine. And I'm just going to wait and see if there's a principle that appears on here. Okay, I'm actually going to see if we get a no demand bar here like this. <laughs> Philip's already read my mind, well we know that happens, so uh, he, uh, I think he's my long lost brother from the past is Philip, because he, honestly this is true, we, we sometimes look at charts together and we've never ever looked at them before and we've got the same lines and the same trigger numbers on post charts, probably because we, we, we both talked by Tom Williams. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what should happen. But uh, uh, Jerry, yes, I do use the continuous contract on the currency futures. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm using. But I also, in, in, in the Infinity platform, um, which is basically their charting package, it's called AT Charts, I also use the front month as well. I use the two together. Very rarely are they different. Very rarely are they different. Okay, I'm just letting this calculate now. Uh, 
Uh, Mello saying, would I still go short now the diamonds here have turned white? I would be very cautious at the moment until I see a key principle, because I think what might be happening is there is some buying in that bar. It's on a three-minute chart. It, the signal's correct. It's gone up five ticks. So it's not wrong, but I'd wait for a proper principle. Don't, don't just look at a bar and go, oh, I think I'll short here. Wait for a principle. That's all I'm going to say to you. Like that, there were some principles over here that were weak. But wait for a no demand bar. A no demand bar that's confirmed, or, or I think we're going to see an upthrust, which is where they mark the price up, and it looks a bit like this look. But that's what's going on. It, it went down to that 38 level that I gave you at the beginning, almost to the well, it went to dead on 8437 look, and there's some buying coming in, and it tells us potential stopping volume. And it tells us here, there should be a down move behind you. Weak holders will eventually panic and sell out regardless of the price, offering the professionals the opportunity to acquire holdings at a good price. Study the background carefully. The next bar should be up to confirm the indicator. Well, it was up. So, so there is buying there. I can't ignore that. If it takes out the 37 level in a minute, I would get short again pretty, pretty quick. PDQ. Okay. All right. We're going to go and have a quick look then um, at the scanner, and I'm going to show you the scanner in uh, in Trade Guider, and this is in the Infinity AT platform. So I'm just going to change presenter. Okay. Can you all just tell me when you can see the Infinity AT charts, which I've got on my backup computer here? Can you Can you all see that? Uh, Steve says he, he's only used candlesticks. We can we can use candlesticks as well in VSA. Um, so, uh, Steve, very but a lot of our customers use candlesticks with volume. In fact, I think I can probably put a chart up when we switch back over. To um, yeah, I'll put candlesticks on. Okay, I don't use them, so I, I'm you know I'm not. Uh, right, it looks like this market's going to break that 37 level again. Now let me show you the scanner. And use candlesticks definitely though, not a problem. Now this is the scanner. This is why I went short. Okay, here you can see the scanner is scanning these different time frames: the daily chart, the, the four-hour chart. Okay, just just to be a, just bear with me a second. I might try and get short here again on the uh, the Aussie because I think it's going to run. Let me just put an order in just below here. Okay. All right. If it breaks this 38 level again, it's going to go very quickly. So I've got an order in just below that now, so I don't miss it. But anyway, let me just explain here what's happening. You've got, you can see here, sign of weakness on the five-minute chart. Red bar, the red blocks and the red bars mean the market is trending down in all the major time frames. On the four-hour chart, sign of weakness 10 is an upthrust. That's a, a serious sign of weakness, as you can see. You can see here on the daily chart, you've got an upthrust six days ago. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason we issue a short alert on the, on the Aussie dollar, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for trend alignment in multiple time frames, and that's exactly what we've got. So this is where I find trading quite easy, because if everything's pushing lower, and you're seeing key principles like this. Look at this red, look at this chart here. Look at the weakness above us here. You see here there's an upthrust here. That's what it looks like. It's pretty high volume. Closing on the low. Next bar down. I mean this is not a seriously strong chart at all. It's a very weak chart. And any time you see no demand, um, and is this going to go to 8, 0, 0. I'm certain it is. And, and it might happen today. But remember we have already had a pretty big down move. So we are vulnerable to finding support down at these levels. But, but you know, at 8436, 8435, if it starts to break those levels, it will break down very, very quickly. Okay? All right, and I'm filled. Yeah, that's great. So now you can see this at work. You can actually see it at work, which is ideal. So now, if we look at this, you can see the color of the diamonds are red, the color of the bars are red, 
There's the up thrust. We've now taken out 8438, which was the key level I gave you. So now the next level I've got is 0.8421 is the next level that this is looking to hit. Now, again, I know I haven't gone to crude oil yet, but let me show you how we get email alerts to warn us of these setups. Okay, let me just show you what they look like. Okay, so I'm just going to change presenter, and you'll be able to see here. Okay, this is what an email alert looks like. Okay, you can see it here. It tells me that a principle has appeared that needs me to go and look at the chart. All right. Um, now, in this instance, it was the Canadian dollar, which we'll come back to because I want to go to crude oil in a, in a second. But what we see here, I'm showing you the trade guider chart here with a candlestick on it. All right. So someone asked earlier, does, does VSA work with candlesticks? And the answer is yes, it does. Okay. There's, 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 there you can see it here. Okay. I don't use candlesticks. I don't know how to read them. But here you can see these are candlestick charts. Now here you've got a little bit of stopping volume again at that at that same level, okay? Again at that same level on the Aussie. Now let me just move the um, bar chart style back to to there, right? And let's go and look at crude oil now. Quite a lot of things going on here at the moment in the markets, which is good. Right, so we've covered the Aussie dollar. All right, now let's go and have a look at the alert that we did. We've done another alert today for crude oil, but the one I want to draw your attention to was this one over here a few weeks ago. This was sent in early October. In October. Let me just check the date for you just to make sure we got this right. There it is on the uh, the 9th of October. Okay, now this was a what we call an investment trade. So these are the longer term type trades that we look for. And we had an initial target of 85 and then 80. Well, of course, we're way past that now. So there's been many shorts that we could have had on this particular instrument. So let's have a quick look at crude. Let me shut these two. And we'll start off with the weekly chart. Okay. All right. So crude oil, weekly chart. Okay. Now what Wyckoff told us many, many years ago, in a bear market, you look for increasing volume on down bars and decreasing volume on up bars. And here you can see one up bar that we've had on volume less than the previous two bars. A down bar. Not a lot of volume on that from last week. And now crude's trying to find some support, but I don't think it's going to find very much. Now, if we look at the daily chart, we can see here that we're trending down. We've had a down bar. What I've said in the alert was to look very carefully okay, on, on this chart for a no demand bar. Okay. Um, uh, George, I've got an 11 tick stop on that, um, just, uh, just, uh, just answering your question. Um, here <coughs> is a no demand bar. <clears throat> now, this is in a downtrend. There's weakness in the background. The volume is less than the previous two bars, which is what defines no demand. And the next bar has confirmed it because it's closed lower. So we've got a confirmed no demand indicator. Now, if we now go and have a look at the four-hour chart, we can see weakness appearing on up bars. Because already here, we've got that favorite indicator that we also saw in the Aussie, the up thrust. And today, we're now falling. Look, we're below 68. We're at 67.96. And the market here is still in a downtrend. And every effort to support it has, has, has caused these markups. Look at the volume on this bar. 
if that was all buying volume, the next bar wouldn't close like that. Okay, and that's what's caused it for the last sort of 14, what's the for eight, 16 hours nearly to continue to, to fall. And if you're a scalper of this particular instrument, you're going to see that the hourly chart is starting to change behavior. And that's exactly what I said in the, um, in the alert that we sent out a few hours ago. All right, here we're starting to change behavior. And if it gets down to the 64 level, which I think it will, because of this weakness here, then we've got a very, very good trade to the downside of, on, on crude oil. Now, I'm already positioned short from much higher up, but that is a climactic bar, okay? And when you see climactic action like this, uh, Jerry, are you, am I using two different VSA scanners? Yes, I am. I'm using the scanner in the Trade Guider real-time program here, and I'm also using the Infinity AT scanner to get my email alerts, because Trade Guider doesn't have the capability to do email alerts, whereas the Infinity charts do. Just an idea, um, I have the main packages that I'm using to trade is MT4, um, Trade Guider, which you've got here, and I'm also using Infinity AT charts, and I'm placing my orders on the Infinity AT platform. So I'm getting a good idea of what the market's doing. I've got uh, four screens that, that I'm using. Obviously, for broadcasting purposes, I'm not using four screens. I'm using two. Otherwise, you eat up your bandwidth. Okay. Um, yeah. If it. Um, interestingly enough, Jamie, you mentioned the seventy the seventy dollar level here. Okay. Well, I'm using just a five minute chart on crude today. All right. Since I issued the short alert, you can see what I said to look out for on that chart was no demand, and there is no demand. Okay, it's definitely there. All right, there's no, there's no doubt about that. That is, that is weakness, and it's in a downtrend. So at the moment, I don't see any serious strength for us to rush in and, uh, and, uh, and buy on. There's nothing there I'd really go get excited about. I mean, if it gets down to this, this level, 67.75, when the market opens in America, um, you know, and you've got to be aware that when the market opens in America, it'll move crude oil. We may well see a spike before, because that's what they're going to do. They're going to mark it up very, very likely. They're going to mark it up aggressively. That's what that's what professional money do. That's how they operate. Okay, good. All right, let me bring in Philip. Let me just switch the other mic on, Philip, and then I'll I'll let you do a sound check. Just bear with me. All right, I'm on the backup computer now. Philip, can you can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you loud and clear, Gavin. Good. Can you hear me okay? Say hello to you. Yeah, everything's very good, actually. We just got back from Bulgaria, and it looks like I'm going to be on Bloomberg next week. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be interviewed about market manipulation. Can you believe it? Let me know when that's going to be, because I'll watch that. Yes, I'm sure you will, with great interest. Um, so, Philip, um, yeah, lots of things to look at. Um, currently, as you've seen, we shorted the Aussie earlier. I don't know if you saw the trade alert I sent out yesterday night. But but it was yes, it, it, it was very weak and, and and it's come it's 36 ticks away from the target. I don't see any reason that it's going to go uh, down there. There's just a couple of quick questions here. I day trade the mini S and P. But quite hard to apply the trending strategy because I have to deal with a trading range most of the time. Please help me to understand my problem. Sure. Okay. Well, we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, for what we'll do is we'll go and look at the trending system on the um, Infinity AT platforms and keep in mind. There are times when if the trending system isn't aligned, you shouldn't be trading it. If it's in a trading range, don't trade it. Go and find something else like the Aussie dollar that isn't in a trading range. It's trading down. Go and find things. Uh, Steve, we will we will send an email out to the database when the Bloomberg interview is confirmed. Yeah, we will we'll do that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Philip, I'll, I'll make you an organizer. Just bear with me. Now, I've done that, actually, so I'll just hand, hand the screen over to you. Here's Philip Tristan, everybody. And, Philip, just so you know, We've got a lot of new people in this room who've never seen or don't know much about VSA because we've got a lot of people from Bulgaria who joined us. And we also did an event last week, um, which was um, done to, it's called Round the Clock Trader. There was about 900 people there, I think. So uh, they're most of them from the United Kingdom, Philip. So anything you've got to say uh, on the UK market, I'm sure would be of great interest. Uh, <laughs> Richard said, I've just found the secret of VSA, so don't tell them too much on Bloomberg. I won't tell them too much. Don't worry, Richard. You're, you're okay. 
Okay, and it looks like crude spiking a little bit as well, which is just what I thought it might do. So we look for an upthrust on crude oil, everybody. Um, Philip, over to you. Welcome to the trading room. Thanks, Gavin, and a uh, big welcome to everybody who's uh, come in recently who doesn't uh, know me. I've been uh, involved in the markets for many years. I started with investments in, I think it was 1969 as a teenager, was my first interest in the markets. And I've been using BSA, or Volume Spread Analysis, now for precisely 25 years this uh, week, actually. So uh, a little bit of a celebration there, I think. Now. Gavin, you asked me earlier if I'd have a look at uh, Thomas Cook, which is a UK stock. Yeah, and I just that's right. And I just wanted to look at that uh, while you were talking. It came out with some results this uh, last few days, which is why it got marked down. But if we look at the, I'm assuming we're looking at this sort of more on a shorter term basis, so I won't look at the very long term picture of it. But this is the chart of Thomas Cook. And if I put uh, a couple of hundred bars up just to show you the long-term picture. A nice steady downtrend in the place. I've drawn a couple of trend channels in. The first one was was this downtrend channel here. And then the second one is this one here, which is uh, slightly less steep because it did look as if the stock was trying to form a, a base here. Although we're not, having said that, we're not seeing a lot of accumulation taking place at the bottom. So, how are we going to analyze this stock? Well, let's go down now to 100 bars. We've looked at the long-term trend. So let's follow this through. Down we come. We had an attempt here to stop the market. We got a gap down here. This was on the 16th of September. If I just quickly flick back, no particular news there. So nothing special that came out there. Now, fairly high volume on that bar. But what's important is there's no reaction to that high volume. Now, what we're seeing here, because of the high volume or the activity on this bar, as it's marked down, there's some buyers appearing, but there's also sellers about. So you've got the interaction here between the buyers and the sellers. Now, what we want to see is whether the buyers have got enough power here to actually push the price up. If they haven't, then we shouldn't be interested in this stock to long side. So what you could do initially was to put a line, a horizontal line on the top of this bar, which is at 126.6. And you ask the market the question, has it got the strength to push up through that line at 126.6? And the answer is very clearly it hasn't. And in fact, over here on this bar, so that's partially covered by that line there, but you've got an upthrust coming in, which didn't even get to the top of the bar. So that's confirming weakness, and then the market moves down, and it breaks the bottom of this bar at 120. Once it's broken the bottom of the bar, you notice it pushes up several times up to that 120 level, and every single time it fails. And the most notable one was there, where it pushes right up to the 120, hits that line, 119.9, we're not going to argue about 0.1 of a penny, and you've got a signal telling you no demand. So as price is marked up, back to that level, there's no interest in higher prices because there's no activity. And to push up through that bar will, requires activity or effort, and there's simply no effort there. So the price comes off. Now we get down to here, mid-October, we do see a little bit of support coming in for the market. We see a bit of an increase in volume. In fact, let me just uh, rescale this temporarily because one of the problems is when you have a very high volume bar in the background, it tends to dwarf all the others. So we can rescale this temporarily to get a clearer picture. Now, as we've come down in price, we've got this bar here, which is, uh, shows an increase in volume. It's closed near the top. The next bar, however, is still down, so there's still a lot of sellers in here. This one's a little bit more positive because it's closed in the middle. The spread or the range on the bar has narrowed somewhat, and it's also onto the bottom of our trend channel. And we've got an increase in volume, despite the fact the spread's narrowed. That suggests that the buyers were beginning to overcome the sellers at that point, but be careful here because there's still a lot of sellers around. Now, we push up. We have a bar there which 
difficult really to read that bar because it, there's a little bit of strength, a little bit of weakness on that bar, and you'd have to go down probably to an hourly chart to interpret what that's really telling you. But the next bar is marked up, and that clearly shows that there's still a lot of supply on this stock. Now, the next bar is a down bar. Sorry, it's an up bar, but it's pushed down during the day. It's pushed right down. In fact, it's just pushed down to new lows. The low on that bar was 99.4. So it's designed to catch any stops. If anybody had bought here and had put their stop just under the 100.6, they may well have been stopped out on this bar here. Now, once you remove a lot of those stops, that tends to then strengthen the uh, stop temporarily at least. And we've got a bar here which uh, says push down. It's closed just above the middle. And we've got fairly high volume. So it does appear, looking at these bars collectively, that there is some support coming in around this level. But there's definitely supply when it pushes up here on this bar. So the next bar, now this one's an interesting one because this is a push up with a widespread and it's very high volume. And what it's done, it's pushed up to absorb the selling that's present two bars before on this up thrust light bar. So there's a real effort there to push up and close above the top of that bar. And then the next bar we see a little bit of weakness, but they're still prepared to continue pushing it up. There's effort again on this bar. Now, as we come back down in price, look what happens here on these two bars. Because we push down into the middle of this high volume up bar, and this time the selling has disappeared. There's, oh, there's very little selling in here. And that's a very good sign because now we have some, a bit of buying in the background. We've pu pushed up through this initial buying area here. And then as we pushed up here, we've seen supply on this bar, which has now been tested. And we've changed trend. So therefore, you could take a long position on here. And you would ride that up initially to here, which is where your resistance will start to come in from this ultra high volume bar at 122, which is marked there because of the close of that bar. Now, as we hit up against that, obviously, there's going to be supply there. But they're prepared to push through there. Again, there's fairly high volume here as we push up this effort. And we continue to push up. Here we're struggling a little bit with the top of our trend channel. We see some supply coming in. The next bar pushes up on no demand. So we now have to be a little bit careful if we're in a long position. Then push down. Not particularly high volume on these bars. Now here we get a two bar reversal. We've got to be a bit careful of this one because we've got a bit of weakness in the background, but it looks as if they're prepared to take it up a bit further. And uh, it pushes up here, a couple of bars. Go down bar there, a little bit of extra volume, but the next bar's up. Continues to push up. A little bit of testing on that bar. Volume's a little bit high. Then we start to see our first sign of weakness coming in here. And remember, we've got this old top to the left here this bar here where we had quite high volume. We pushed up and we've seen another potential up thrust at that level. Then we push up. Now we've got confirmation of that up thrust because we've now got no demand. So they're not interested in higher prices at that point. Now the next bar's down. There's an attempt here just to support the market. That one, they're trying to decide what to do. This one just push it down initially, then they pushed up on the highs. So there's an effort here to try and push high. Notice how the volume's higher than it has been the last few bars. So there's an effort to push up. But that effort hasn't resulted in pushing up through this area to the left. So we can only assume that that effort uh, does contain supply, even though that bar closed on the high. And of course, the next bar which was the 26, which was, I think that was Wednesday, yeah, last Wednesday. They came out with results, which I never really looked too much at results initially because I'm more interested, not so much in the results, but how the share price reacts to those results. Um, there's a great danger if you're investing in a stock 
looking at results and thinking, yes, they're better than the analysts expected. But that's not important if the stock price actually reacts badly. So always remember it's the chart, reading the chart, that gives you the interpretation of what's going on in the market. That's the most important part. So we've got a mark down here. Let me put the volume back now to scale it back how it should be. And you can see as we gap down here on the results, we were marked down from a close of 138 and the low of this bar was 105. Notice how it pushed down back into this area where we had the buying over to the left that we looked at earlier. And it found support again in that area. This time we've got huge volume. So there's a definite transfer of stock here. So presumably, as people were panicking and dumping this stock, somebody was coming in and buying. So it's closed up near the high. So there's a lot of buying coming in there, but please bear in mind there's also an awful lot of selling. The other thing is we don't know yet whether the sellers at this level have been satisfied. So are there still any further sellers left in this stock? What I'd like to see is some sort of test to prove that. Now, the next bar was up confirming the strength of that previous bar. Then we see an up bar here, which again, if you went down to a smaller time frame on this stock, uh, I haven't got intraday data for this on this particular computer, so I can't look at it on here. But if there, it may well have been there was testing on an, say an hourly chart here, which is why it closed up on the highs. And then we're seeing a further test yesterday with even lower volume. Now the only fly in the ointment here is that we are now at the top of the trend channel and we're also at resistance from this line over to the left at 122. But if this can push up in response to this, then you would expect that this is going to go higher because you've got a massive shakeout here in the background. So this one's a very interesting one that I'd be watching, but you need confirmation. This is a test coming in here. It's telling us actually test in a rising market, which technically is right because it's in the short term time frame at least this is pushing up. Now if we just have a look at what the bar tells us, Gavin, if there's any trade alerts running coming in, please do interrupt me. But uh, this bar tells us if we go down to future, we read what it tells us. Following a test, expect higher prices. Failure to do so is a sign that the market is not ready to go up. Now, if there is strength in the background and the test bar is back down into the area of buying, a successful test is a strong indication of strength showing supply has disappeared. Now, the only slight concern I have here is I would prefer to have seen this come back down and test the massive high volume on the shakeout. If it tests at the top of this bar from about 113 to 116, which is the top area here, that would be a perfect place to have a test. It may not happen. Sometimes it doesn't on shakeouts. So if this can push up now and respond to this test, and I don't know what, without looking over the other side of the room, I'm not sure what Thomas Cook have done today, but uh, if this responds and close up here somewhere and the test is successful, then this could be a in very interesting setup. Right, okay. Anything else you'd like me to look at while I've got the screen going? Yeah, have you got, go and take a look at the daily chart of Apple and, and, and look at the shakeout yesterday. Tell us what you make of that. Um, do, by the way, we've just had a sign of strength coming on the Aussie dollar, FYI. So, um, just so you know, there's a little bit of, it looks like there's a little mini shakeout on the, on the Aussie. Oh, yeah, I've just noticed that because I've got that on MT4 on the other screen, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it's quite an interesting one. Just, uh, just let's flash back to the NASDAQ as well then. Let's have a look at the NASDAQ. So this is the NASDAQ composite. This is the cash index, not the futures. I'll just put 100 bars up. So we pushed up on the NASDAQ. We had a little bit, well, we had a, you can class that bar in two ways. You can class it as an up thrust, which is what the computer is telling you. If you look at the volume or activity, you could also call that no demand. It doesn't matter. Both are correct definition. But what is uh, important is it does show um, a little bit of weakness up there, and the market's got basically tired, which is why it's been marked down here. Now, the NASDAQ did actually close on the low of the bar with an increase in volume. 
which are slightly different, I think, to what we saw on the S&P from memory. I think the S&P, yeah, it did close a little bit more flow, but again, quite a big increase in volume on the S&P too. So we are seeing a little bit of weakness up here on the S&P. You notice there's, there's some weakness on this up bar. There's certainly some supply coming in here. The next bar is, is up on a narrow spread with still average volume. Then we've got a weak looking bar there because it's been marked up and closed near the low on increasing volume. And then we've got no demand. And uh, there's an attempt there to test which has failed. So you've got quite a bit of weakness there on the S&P all of the last week and then the market's responded to it. Um, the NASDAQ up to that point was actually a little bit stronger than the uh, S&P because it's continued to make new highs. So going back to Apple, let's look at the Apple chart, let's follow this up. So we're following that along, we've got some um, still pushing up here, definitely a bit of supply coming in here on the 25th because it's been marked up, it's met some supply and price has closed down uh, on the lows of the day. The next bar has pushed up confirming the weakness, we see no demand. So as it's marked up here, there's no interest in higher prices from the professional money. We then see what you probably described, although that, yeah, there is a down bar, there's a, again a test, very similar to what you just saw on the S&P. So we've got a weak looking bar here on the 25th, a weak looking bar on the 26th, which is confirming the weakness on the previous bar, and then we've got a test which has now failed, so we've got three weak looking bars together up here. But then on this bar, we've got a down bar, big increase in volume, it's closed in the middle. So there's definitely some support for this stock. Um, but there's also pretty heavy supply around there. So I would say on this one, that's a pretty heavy shakeout. But I'd like to see that tested, because the fact it's closed in the middle rather than up on the high tells me there's still quite a bit of supply around on this. And I would need to see that tested if we're going to see higher prices. I don't know what uh, your intraday charts are showing, Gavin, but uh, that's how I, how I would look at it based on at least the daily chart. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm the intraday chart, so you can probably yeah. tell me what yeah, they're saying. Yeah, exactly with you on that. Um, I think, you know, we, we actually did an alert on Apple several weeks ago to buy it back down at 89. So, um, you know, it, it was looking considerably strong at that point. Um, but it, that, that shakeout, if that's tested, that's going to go even higher. And, and coming into the Christmas period, that's not particularly okay. surprising at all. Good. Any questions for Philip, anyone, before we go back and have a look at this uh, Aussie? And you can probably hear my dog in the background. That's our guard dog. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom's got a question for you there, Philip. Oh, right. he's a, can you read that for me because well. I can't see the screen? Yeah, could you look at gold as well? Daily chart. This is the Daily Futures chart, Phil. Yeah. Um, I do watch the spot, but I watch the spot on um, MT4 because it's uh, free data. But uh, interesting one, this one. Very interesting one. I won't go too much into the detail here because I have explained that there was some, some buying coming in here, but there's also been quite a bit of supply around gold. And the level I f felt was important was 1202.5. Now, the reason I mentioned 1202.5 was, was it this bar? I think it was this one. Yeah, it's this one. Actually, the, the uh, prices have changed very fractionally because I'm looking at a continuous futures contract. And when they roll the contracts over, the back prices are altered slightly. It doesn't make any difference to the chart, but it does make a slight difference to the levels. Um, so I was actually looking at this bar, which is the high volume down bar here. And if you look across, there's been several attempts to try and take the top of that bar out, all of which had failed up to this point. Now, obviously, gold has been in the news recently. There was the uh, Swiss referendum, which I'm sure you all know about on Sunday. And uh, I had been following that as closely as I could. And the um, percentage who rejected the idea that the increase the amount of gold that the Swiss Central Bank was going to hold was quite substantial. I was surprised at the amount. And uh, logically, you would have thought 
that gold would have plummeted on that news. And in fact, if we look at um, the day, this was Friday, the market was marked down, but it did close off the lows. Uh, there's quite a bit of volume in there. Now, when it opened on Monday, in response to that news, you can see it got marked down. It didn't break the lows over to the left. And then look at what happened after that. Pushed up, marked up. There was real effort to push up through here and take out this high around the 1202.5 level, 1203 level. Now I'm watching this very carefully at the moment on the spot market because on the spot market, I'm sorry I can't show this chart because it's on another computer, but price was marked up and there's a lot of effort going in as the market was marked up. And the very last bar, which was uh, yesterday at the top, showed uh, a definite narrowing of the spread and the market was pretty overbought, which is why it's come off. But I'm watching very carefully on the spot because I'm watching the level from around $1,180 on spot. Now that was where we started to see the effort to push up. If we take that out to the downside, then I would start to get very negative on gold again. If we can hold above that 1180 and we can test and continue to push up, then I think gold could push up further. Um, this is quite a difficult bar in isolation to read because obviously you've, you've got, um, it's an up bar showing huge volume, which we talk about as weakness. And that's true. There is potential weakness in this bar. But there's a couple of other things we have to look at. First of all, it does have what we call a bottom tail to it. And a bottom tail is where the low of the bar is substantially below the close of the previous bar. That uh, shows strength. And also, we have pushed up and uh, taken out these tops, which is absorption volume. So you've got quite a mixture on here. So it's a question really of waiting now on gold and seeing what the market is going to do. We're waiting for confirmation from the market. Uh, and as I say, on the spot market, I'm waiting to see if it can hold that 1180 to the upside. Because if it breaks down through there, it's going to leave an awful lot of supply above the chart, which I'm not going to be very happy about um, if I was thinking of the long side. So 1180 for me on the spot, very, very important level. Now, on the long side, it's starting to try and push up again now. If we can push back up through that um, 1220 on the spot, then I think you can possibly expect some higher prices because the next resistance is really coming on the futures bar. You've got um, a bit of supply from this bar here, but potentially you could get up all the way to the 1250 level if we can push up through that um, 1220 level on the spot. So quite an interesting situation with gold at the moment, but it's a question of just waiting and being patient and letting the market confirm what direction it wants to go in. Don't be impatient, don't try and jump in too quickly um, because you can get whipsawed um, very heavily on this uh, market when it's this volatile. So that's about all I can say really on gold. Great, thank you very much indeed Philip, good. A um, couple of questions came in, one from James. Uh, he says as a candle that looked like a huge engulfing bar and Jerry says, can you explain the strength closing below of the previous bar? Was the question. Yes, um, let me just put the candlesticks up for you. There we are, there's the candlesticks. I don't use candlesticks. I'm afraid I don't understand them. But there's the candlestick bar for you. So that shows that. Just put that back. Now, let me explain a little bit about this. Let's put a few less bars up. Just put uh, 50 bars up. Okay, so this is the bar we're talking about. <coughs> now, Go back to the previous bar, we're down bar here closing just off the lows. Now the tick to the right is the actual close of the bar, so just here. Now, when we're talking about an up bar, an up bar with high volume, we normally class as a weak bar, or at least showing weakness, because there must be supply on the bar. Now here we do have a very, very wide spread, which to me negates that weakness to some extent. But what's important here is the fact that it's got what we call a bottom tail. 
Now a bottom tail in this particular bar is where price has been marked down initially and having been marked down, buyers have come in. That's witnessed by the fact it's pushed up and closed on the high because if there weren't buyers in here, how could it have been marked down here and then pushed all the way up to close on the high? So that shows strength. So if we if we take if you see where I've drawn well I've got my uh, cross here and I'll just leave that where it is now. Just leave that in that position. If you look underneath that cross, you can see quite a bit of that bar is actually below that cross. That is strength. If I look, let me go across to another bar to give you a better example. Now let's take this bar here for example. Here we've got a test. Now that test, all of that test is actually underneath the close of the previous bar and that's the reason why that bar has potential strength. Same here, this bar here. Similar thing. But where you get a bar, um, let's pick another, let's say this bar. That's low volume, and just let me see if I can find one with high volume. But any bar like this, which uh, pushes down initially and then closes up right on the highs like this, even though you've got very high volume, must show some strength by the fact that it's initially pushed down and then has attracted buyers. So as it's been marked down, the buyers have overcome the sellers, they've overpowered the sellers who were present down here and therefore that shows strength. So I hope that's, that's explained that because that's quite an important principle and um, as I say we talk about up bars as being weak bars if they have high volume but if you have this bottom tail that will at least negate some of that weakness. So Thanks Philip. Back to you, Kevin. Yeah perfect. Okay any questions for Philip before we, um, we go and take a look at some more live charts and uh, and we've got any questions at all, do feel free to ask them now. Now, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at gold on the five minute, that's no problem. Okay, let's have a quick look. And the euro, okay, that's fine. We'll have a look at that. All right, let's take the screen then from Philip. Thanks a lot, Philip. Be back with you shortly. That's right. A pleasure. All right. Okay, everyone. Let's uh, start with the Aussie dollar. Okay. Now, we've got a very interesting principle at work on this particular chart. <clears throat> now, you can see that we've traded to a low of 0.8428. Okay. But now we've got some potential strength coming into the market okay now I don't know if this is going to be enough to change the trend but there is down here what Wyckoff would call a potential spring position but it needs to be tested so what I'm looking out for now is no supply in, into this area okay um, what we've got is everything is aligning to the downside but remember you're vulnerable after you've had a, a down move like this a very big one by the way a very nice one you are vulnerable to some professional buying coming in. And again, I'm noticing that the volume increased on this down bar closed in the middle. Now, that doesn't stop me thinking that the market could um, up thrust here. So what I've done is I've got a, a, um, an order in just above here. If we up thrust, I'm going to catch it. All right, Philip, that's fine. I just saw that. So if we break 8438, we could easily push higher quite quickly. So just be aware of that if you're short. That, that there is some an attempt anyway to, to support the market and as Tom always taught me you ignore the signals at your peril what I notice look on these down bars is an attempt to hold the market up I, I don't know if it's, it's going to be temporary I don't think it's going to be permanent but they have tested it here and if you see another test over here and we break the top of that bar it's very likely coming into the open they'll up thrust the market to catch any shorts because there's going to be a lot of people now that have taken shorts down here. Just be aware that's dangerous. Okay. Andre with Apple, if we get a test on, on that particular, um, and if, if, I'm assuming you've all got a copy of my book um, because we gave you that for free. 
So it's all in my book, it explains it. Can I put a 50% retracement on this chart? Sure. Let's put a Fibonacci level on here. So here's the high of the day. And here's the low. Yeah, we could we could easily experience a bit of a retracement. I'm not sure we'll get all the way up here to 482, but we could certainly, because you can't ignore now that you've got a lot of high volume coming in on down bars that's been tested. Now, if it breaks 8438, we will very likely see a change in behavior because you've had such a big down move. And there's been plenty of participation in these shorts. You know, we've had several trades today to the short side. Now you ignore the chart. If you get a sign of weakness appearing coming in, just be patient because the market is still overall weak. But at some point, look at the very high volume with the narrow spread. All right, that's telling us something. Someone has come in here and, and supported the market. Now it hasn't done anything to the to, to the chart yet. It's got to go back up now above the 8438 level. And if it does, it will very likely retrace because there's definitely an attempt to support the market. But now. The shorts, if you're thinking shorts, you've got to look at the chart and say, prove to me that you're changing behavior. Okay, so let's let's go and have a look at the S&P 500 then, and we'll talk about the trending systems. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you all some questions, all right, and I'm looking for a change in behavior here on the Aussie dollar. We've had shorts, now it's a potential actually, if it breaks for 8.438, and tests it to actually rally a little bit. Okay, let's look at the daily chart. All right, now the daily chart of the S&P is clearly in an uptrend, and you've got a lot of strength in the background. All right, we're back into this trend channel. A few days ago here, last week, we had a test. We've come back down into that area again to test this level. So we know here, we, um, okay, Jeff, that's fine. Um, we know here that we're in an uptrend, no doubt about that, okay, so that's the first tick in the box. Now, here's your fly in the ointment. The 4-hour chart is actually pushing lower, and you do have principles in the background on very high volume. That's the reason that this market's trending lower, and actually here, you've got a trap up move. So we're trending down on the 4-hour chart, so you've got to, you've got to keep that in mind hourly chart definitely trending down and in the last hour we've had a sign of weakness okay so there we know we're trending down on the four hour and the hourly chart so it looks to me like professional money are pushing the price down to try to buy more because they're still bullish there's no don't get me wrong but remember you buy on down bars you buy the market as it falls but you've got to wait for the principle to appear there's nothing here that I would be wanting to do at the moment in this S&P market. There's nothing here that's obvious. Look at this 15 minute chart. It's what I call chop city. Look at the colors of the diamonds and the bars. They're not trending. The 15 minute is not in a trend. It's moving sideways. So with that in mind, there are other markets which are much better that are trending better. So usually when I see something like this from yesterday and this, it's not broken out. There's nothing here that is an obvious potential trade setup. Nothing. Go and have a look at the five minute chart. Nothing, nothing really obvious to tell me in here which way this market wants to go. Okay, now let's go and have a look at the Euro um, and we'll see if we can find something that is obvious. Right, the Euro apparently is having a nice little downward movement as well. Daily chart of the euro, clearly trending down. Now, the alert I sent out on the euro was to hit 1.2400. That was a few weeks ago, and we're very close to it right now. So it will go there. You will get 1.2400, okay? No doubt about it on the euro. Now, look here. Look at all of these trends here, Book, and you were asking the question. The daily is red. The four-hour, red. The hourly, red. The 15-minute, red. The five-minute, red. Now look at the scanner 
in the um, Infinity AT platform, which is what I'm using, and it's really obvious. I'll look at the J Japanese yen in a minute. We'll do that now. Okay, so here is, now, the, the, just as I thought, the Aussie dollar is trying to push up a little bit here because we've seen that buying. Don't ignore the principles. Yes, it's weak, but there is some buying. Look, I can see the buying here on the five-minute chart. But if we look at the euro, <clears throat> look at the trending system, everyone. Red, 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 and there, what have you got? An up thrust. On a 60-minute chart, two hours ago, the up thrust. Let's go and have a look at what that looks like on an actual chart, shall we? Here it is. Clear weakness. Okay? And that's what the market's done. And because all of the trends in the scanner are pointing down, and by the way, this is in Polish because I did an event in Polish a few weeks ago. I haven't changed it. But we do have these in different languages, by the way. Um, I'm hoping to have them in Bulgarian in, in the near future as well, for those of you here from Bulgaria. But that is in the right place. That's why it's collapsing. And again, I did get an email alert on that. I, I'm, not, I'm not short that contract at the moment, but that's why it's weak. And that's what you look for. It, it, it's really not complicated. If you see four or five trends going down, which you clearly have got here, and you see no demand or up thrusts, they're your setups. They're real trade setups. Let's look at the, J, uh, the Japanese yen. Oh, my goodness. Look, exactly the same thing. Short it. Look, red, 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 red. Yeah? Five-minute chart. What do we see? Weakness. Weakness appears on up bars. Yeah? Supply coming in. Supply coming in. Down we go. And it's in the right place because everything's red. The bars are red. The diamonds are red. And that is the proprietary part of the Trade Guider program. That's the bit we, we, we don't tell you how we do. Because it's looking at volume and spread or range of bars. That's what VSA is all about. And it's perfectly logical that the market will do in a downtrend, it will go up on low volume or up thrust, which is something we'll, um, we'll teach you. So the Japanese yen is very weak as well. British pound doing the same thing, turning over to the downside. Beautiful thing to see. Aussie dollar popping up, and I got filled. So I knew this was going to happen. Look at the, come and look at the Aussie dollar here. All right? Because you mustn't ignore the principles, and this is what I was taught by Tom, is don't ignore the principles, because they'll be there at the right edge of the chart. You've got to believe they'll be there, and then you've got to react to them. And, you know, yes, if we look at the Aussie dollar, it's going to get marked up, but, but we've got a clue that it's going to be marked up. Let me just show you here. Okay, because of what's down here. This is this is a spring, right here. If if this remember, I told you that weakness appears on up bars. Now we've actually got some very high volume that's just come in on that up bar, so we've got to be very careful here. Okay, because that could prove to be a weak bar. But what we want to see now is a test of this bar, and then it will push higher. Now, if you see a test, it's going to be a down bar on very low volume into the area. Now keep in mind overall that the Aussie dollar is a weak currency at the moment. Okay, it's it's still with this there's still weakness around. Um, Christian's asking how do we use the volume thermometer? Uh, Donnie, I've got no idea what that was all about. I think you hit the keyboard. Um, can I look at the the 6J, which I've done. How do you use the volume thermometer? Okay, so here, let's look at how negative we were on the thermometer here as we came down. Okay, negative, negative, negative. Now, watch what happens when the buying starts. Okay, let me move forward. We start to build. And, it, and what we need to see now, and well, I'll, I'll leave this bar to fill, is some sort of test. Okay, or no supply. Okay, so that's what we're going to, we'll actually watch this chart live here. Okay, Filippo says, how do you get the software programs that I, that I use? 
Um, the easiest way is to go to tradeguider.com, Filippo, and I know John asked this earlier, and go to this page here. There you go. And the one you want, which, which includes all the software packages that we do, is the lifetime ownership. But because we did the Solid on Monday special yesterday, that is now finished. What I have done for you, Philippa, because I knew you were asking about this last week, and this works for all of you as well. If you want to um, try the software that we're using here in the live trading room today, um, type in this code, and you will get a 50% a discount till the end of the day on any of our packages, but mainly it's the um, what we call the VIP package, which is the lifetime ownership package. Okay, that's for you as well, John. Yeah, no, you can use the same for all of you in this room who are thinking about getting the software and you missed maybe you missed our email. Uh, the link or the code is six two WP eight. Type that in when you go to check out, and that will give you a fifty percent saving. I believe it works on everything, John. Yes, I think so. Um, but definitely I know it works on the lifetime ownership, which is what most people, and that will give you Trade Guider real time, it'll give the Infinity platform, it'll give you MT4, it'll give you Ninja Trader, and then you can select. Now I think we might see a, a principle at work coming here right now, which is going to be a test, and then it's got an initial target. No, no, it's not going to be a test. It's, it's projecting 8450, 8450. Yes, this works for TradeStation as well, Larry. We do have a this product for TradeStation as well. Okay, let's see if it will get up to 8450. Yeah, this is this is very this is because of the buying that you're observing down here. This is what's happening. But now there's a lot of high volume. This could easily be an up thrust. Let me just um Make sure I bring my stop now into break even position immediately. So I'm not going to lose any money here. Okay, so I'm now at break even on this. And I'm going to have a target up here. I'll just let this run for the moment. Let's just let this run. I'm just locking this in here because there's very high volume on this up bar. So I just want to be aware of that fact. I've, I've got a little bit of money here on the table. It could hit this 8450. This could be an up thrust, and I'm just aware of it. So I'm now in a, a profitable position on the trade. So we've, we've actually gone long on the Aussie dollar because of this principle here. And I'm not trend trading this now, but I'm protecting the stock really quickly because I'm in a downtrend. That's the logic behind the position. Okay. Because what you don't want, now I've got high volume on an up bar that's greater than this volume here. Now, this could easily form an up thrust, which means I'll, I'll, I'll participate in the up thrust, but then I'll reverse my position because the market will have become weak on this bar. Now, I've got a prediction here, uh, 0.8450. If it gets to that level and tests it, it could actually go up another 10 or 15 ticks. But whatever happens here, we're protected. Uh, Julius, yes, you can you can scan as long as you've got end of day data. You can't scan it in real time, but how? If you want to find a particular end of a rising market signal, there is a way to do that. I'll show you in a minute when we're when we're either filled here or we're um, or we're tested. We'll see what happens. Yes, correct. Uh, that's correct, uh, Menno. When I put my order in, I automatically start with 17, but depending on what I'm seeing, I move that very quickly. In fact, in this instance, I move the stop up to break even really quickly, then into profit, and if it runs a little bit here, I'd be very happy with taking 100 bucks uh, out of this trade. I'd be very happy just to take another profitable trade. You know, don't ever, I mean, the, the one difficult thing about trading sometimes is knowing when you're, you, you know, I've been thinking short all the time, 
But now what I learned, and I've learned this a long time ago, is you don't ignore what's here. It's caused the market to go up nearly 10, 10 ticks. Now, because <clears throat> we've got ultra high volume on an up bar, and we're in a downtrend, I've, I've brought my stop to profit, not even break even, which more than covers my commission and, and makes, makes the day a successful day. If it hits two, uh, 0 0.8450, which it might do, that's a key level as well. You can automatically set profit targets in this platform. Yes, you can. What you must ensure you do, I've switched it off now, but you click on auto like that, and I've just got filled. There you go. Because of the high volume on the up bar. Now, if this is tested, it may go, may go up again. All right, so we may actually see here, I'm going to watch to see if we get no supply. But um, because it's in such a strong downtrend, that would be considered definitely a counter trend trade. But the reason I'll take that is because this is one of my favorite signal numbers, number 115. And it's based here on what's behind it. Look, the market comes down on a very high volume bar, narrow spread, and some group or group here have decided we're going to support the Aussie dollar here. And then look, low volume down bar, that is what we call a test. And the market moves high. Now, it probably will hit 8450, but I'm not too concerned because we've already taken some trades on the downside on the three-minute chart. And, you know, we know this buying's coming in. Once it hits 8450, which I'm pretty certain it will get there, at that point, I'm going to look at what the volume tells me. If it goes up on no demand, I would consider a short trade again. So, and all I'm doing in the scanner in the Infinity platform, uh, oh, sorry, Jono, I, I do beg your pardon. Yes, I'll do that now for you. Bear with me a sec. Someone just asked me the link to download the Infinity charts. Um, yeah, I'll put that up for you right, uh, right now. So bear with me. Um, this is the link here. I'm going to have to switch my Skype on. Um, and then you'll connect automatically with my broker, Alex. Is my broker at uh, Infinity. He's very good. PSA studies in the scanner, then it's a 50% discount for today, John. That's, that's correct. Yes, that you, you, you've understood correctly. Uh, let me find it for you. Bear with me. Uh, no, it includes the data as well. Um, yes, absolutely. The data is actually included in this. Mm -hmm which I think is one of the major benefits. And after that, if you want to keep the platform, if you fund an account for $3,000 and you trade 10 round terms a month, the platform's free. Uh, but you can talk to Alex more about that. His name is Alex Blizniak at Infinity Futures. And you can just, I'll put his email up uh, as well for you. He's also on Skype as well. a.blizniak at infinityfutures.com. Okay, I'll put that in there for you. There you go. That's a pleasure, Philippe. No problem at all. Um, to order the, the, what, the lifetime ownership, um, yeah, if you go to the cart here, let me just remove one. I'll just show you what you do. Now, it's interesting, on the Aussie dollar, by the way, just while I'm waiting for that to load, we do actually have here what looks to be an upthrust into this area. Now, if we see a no demand bar now, that will prove that, that, that that's weakness. And I, took, I participated in some of the move, but now what's the chart telling me? There's a little bit of weakness here. So we've got to look for confirmation. I think crude oil has been spiking up here. I'm not... Uh, Oh yeah, crude, yes, that's, that's definitely a markup on the 15 minute chart. Yeah, that's weak. Definitely weakness. Yep. Definitely weakness. Let's see if I'm right about this upthrust.
Yeah, crude oil should give some very, very good trades. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if you go to, when you go to check out, um, John, if you go here to the checkout, and it will ask you to put in a coupon code. I've, ne I've not done this for myself, but I know it works. And then you, and you just put in your coupon code when you check out. Um, there you go. It comes down here. Enter your coupon code here, which is 62WP8. Click on Add, and that should discount it. There it is. Okay, And that's valid for the rest of the day. No problem, John. That's absolutely fine. Very happy to, to help you. Okay, let's go back and have a look at this Aussie dollar chart. Okay, so we've nearly hit that 8450 level because um, it, it's being marked up, and that's exactly what I'd have expected after you see the strength coming in. Whether it'll get to the 50% retracement, I, I, I don't know. But certainly there's a lot of volume on this up bar here. And, and you, you now want to be careful here if, if, you were, if you were long because that's where the, the buying came in, but you've got much higher volume on this bar. So it's telling me, I think, coming into the, uh, the US session, they're going to mark this up. So you could even get an up thrust. I'm not trading the S&P, no, not to, because it's just, there's nothing there to trade at the moment. Now, the British pound is looking good. I agree with that. Yeah. You've definitely got weakness here. Uh, you've got it looks a little bit like the Aussie dollar look. Looks the same. You know, you could trade this short again. You've got to, an attempt to support the market down here. Wait for the principle. I mean, if you get an up thrust here or you get no demand, then it will uh, it will be weak. Absolutely, just like crude oil is. Um, if you want a copy of the book, Steve, you can just go to www.tradeguider.com forward slash book, it's, it's a complimentary copy of Trading in the Shadow of the Smart uh, smart Money. It's a $50 value book and you can get that for nothing from that link. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jerry, I'm, I'm sure we can take care of you. You'll just need to email me. Um, we, can, we can probably do something for you on that. Just email me, gavinh at tradeguider.com and I will uh, get my colleague Richard so look into that and we can probably do something for you. No problem. Happy to help. No problem at all. Uh, but you need to email me personally because you won't be able to do anything through the website. Uh, Thierry, absolutely. Be happy to do that. Um, so how do we get an email alert, says Thierry, from um, the Infinity platform? Okay, very easy. Now remember, I've already pre-programmed these alerts in. So you don't have to pre-program them. We've already done it for you. Now, if you want to get that code, you just contact AJ at Trade Guider, and he'll set this up for you. All right? So you don't have to do it yourself. But if you want to do it yourself, can everyone see my screen, first of all? Can everyone see the screen? Uh, okay, so Thierry is asking, how would you set up an alert so we know, you know, to short the market up here and whether to buy the market? Because, again, I got an alert when that sign of strength came in as well. So what we do... And these are the these are the uh, pairs. Um, the, this is what I'm currently monitoring: the Aussie dollar, okay, in all these time frames, the euro, the pound, the yen, the Canadian. You see, the Canadian dollar has just shown me there's a potential reversal here. See that? That's emailed me, told me to go and look at the Canadian for a potential reversal trade. Now I wouldn't do it if there's a big downtrend in place, but I'd certainly be aware of it. So there's a, an email alert which um, I would have received. Now, let me just check my email. And there it is. So now what we'll do is we just watch the chart to see if it changes behavior. We're monitoring gold. You can see there it, it forecasts that there'd be a bit of a bounce in gold on the 99 here, and there it has bounced. Silver, the E-mini S&P, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the crude oil, gas, the 30-year note, and the Swiss franc. Okay, And all of those... As long as your computer's on, and as long as you have your email connected to your smartphone, which mine is, you will get these alerts. Okay? Go to Global Settings, click on General Settings, and in there you will see um, do, 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 General 2 Alerts. There we go. 
and it says here send SM uh, S alert when alert is triggered you can put your mobile phone number in there as well but here you can see that I'm sending my alerts on this particular computer to trade alerts at yahoo.com which is my alert email address please do not email me on that because I don't really check it I only get the alerts on my smartphone click on apply click on OK and you're all set job done now that takes approximately 20 minutes to set up and AJ can, can definitely help you with that if you don't want to do it yourself it's pretty easy okay so a few of you are just uh, saying we've got some no demand bars coming in on the Aussie okay which is what we thought we might see and we have yeah I can see that on the, uh, the three minute chart here in fact it says supply coming in here There's a, there is supply coming in okay and also on crude oil yeah that crude oil is actually more more obvious just to show you this all right let's finish off with this I've got about three or four minutes left there it is I know several of you went went short well done nothing wrong with that um, you've got everything in VSA is telling you that the market's been up thrusted which it has it's gone up once on no demand right and fallen and it's gone up again on no demand and it's fallen and that's live I mean that's why we show these indicators live and we have this live trading room because we know <laughs> that, that now I wouldn't be trading crude oil on a five thousand dollar account by the way uh, it's not big enough but on the big account we do trade crude absolutely okay Darren yeah I saw that as well good now a couple of you said you've got some questions who, who do you contact uh, contact Abraham at tradeguider.com all right just Abraham now he's a prop trader who has joined the team um, several weeks ago and he's a very he, he dedicates four hours of his day to trade guider very nice guy if you've got questions you want to have a demo in the live market if you haven't got the software and you're thinking about it uh, Abraham is our representative and, and you'll be happy to uh, talk to him unfortunately I can't call many people because we're just so busy with the fund at the moment um, but uh, if you email me, I'll happily pass you on to, to Abraham. Thanks a lot, John. I appreciate that. No problem. I'll just check. Uh, just let me check with my business partner, uh, Steve. Just bear with me, everybody. You're going to lose sound for a second. I've got a question just come in. Does that 50% code apply to mentorship courses and stuff? I don't know. Let me, let me go and ask. Just bear with me. And we'll, we'll go and have a look at the Aussie because there may be another trade. I may be able to take another trade here on the, on the Aussie dollar here. Why, am I, why I stick with it is because we're, we're making good money with it. It's interesting where, where it's at right now. It, it looks like it wants to, to, to try and test this level, but it's, uh, it, it's setting up for another move for sure on the, uh, on the US Open. Just bear with me a second. I'll, I'm just going to check with, uh, with Richard. Okay, hi Filippo. Um, just to answer your question, that, that coupon code that I've given you will only work for the Trading Tools um, VIP package, but what Richard's going to do, my business partner, you have to give him 15 minutes, is we did do the Black Friday promotion, and because a lot of you are new in this room and you, and you missed it, if you go and type in the coupon code BLACK into any of the products on the Trade Guider site, you'll get a 50% discount up until midnight tonight, New York time, all right? And that's for those of you that we didn't get the email on Friday because you've just come into the database. Okay. So that hopefully helps you out as well, John. Uh, Raymond, yes, it is. It did hit 8450. It's just done it now. Um, 
but I wasn't going to hold the position, and I'll just explain why. Because you've got weakness appearing, but I think it's going to go up on no demand. So I think you, if you watch this contract, um, and you're a member of our alert service, tradingthemarkets.com, um, which is just www.tradingthemarkets.com, I may will send another alert out on this when I take another trade this afternoon, because I am going to be monitoring it uh, as well. Okay, is there any questions before I wrap up? And uh, I'm at the next trading room is going to be tomorrow, um, and we're going to be trading some stocks tomorrow for the first time. So we're looking forward to showing you some stocks tomorrow, mainly US and UK stocks, but we will look at some Australian stocks as well. Uh, yeah, Darren, I'll, I'll happily connect you with, with, with Abraham. Uh, just email him and tell him that you met us in, uh, in Barcelona. And, uh, not Barcelona. Um, but just tell him that you've met with us. And, um, yeah, no problem, because we, we actually met Abraham in Barcelona. Just mention you were in Poland with us, that would be fine. Now, we might see an, an upthrust here, actually. So I'll just wait a couple of minutes just to see if we actually get a principle here. You should be, John, trading the Z4 at the moment. That, that's what we're trading at the moment. So you're, we're trading Z4. There you go. It's back up to the, this level, which the point and figure projection from there to there was spot on. But, you know, when I see ultra-high volume and weakness like that, I've got to be very careful. But they are testing it. So this could be the upthrust that we're looking for. We'll see. Don't analyze the bar until it's closed. That's quite important. Don't analyze the bar until it's actually closed. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the euro on the hourly chart then, because the euro is setting up as well. So quite a lot going on. I mean, there's certainly some setups here. Now, you've got a lot of volume coming in on the downside here. Just be careful, because this could be a shakeout. Don't know yet. Uh, I can't really analyze that for another few minutes. But let's see. I, I think you might find this could be a bit of a spring off this area. So if you are sure it has been weak, we'll see what that bar says. This is the currency futures contract, just to be clear. It's not the spot forex contract. But I'd be very surprised if we didn't get a signal on this. Uh, and it's also in a trend cluster, which I haven't talked about, which are very important, which is areas of support. Let me just get rid of the cluster for a minute. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the live trading room for all our trading the markets members. Thank you, Philip. That's very kind of you. Good. Well, we made a couple of good little trades there, so that's that's nice to see. There's, there's, there's probably some other trades we could have taken, but but I'm, I'm quite satisfied with, with, with what we've done there. Because we're able to take a counter-trend trade, which very rarely do I do that, but Tom has been showing me that that setup will very often work. Let's see what we get here. I think this is going to show us potentially a stopping volume or a shakeout here. Climactic action, yeah. Now again, don't do anything, but be aware you've got an increase in volume, narrow spread. Watch for a test here, and if it tests, it is very likely push push a bit higher. So if you're short, be aware of that signal now. Don't ignore it. And you've also got down here similar things going on. A bottom reversal and, in fact, a test after a shakeout. So this could, like the Aussie dollar, could actually push higher. Again, the charts are not lying to us, are they? The charts are, you know, here we go on the Aussie. And we said up here that it will hit the 450 area. And it has. So the signals are correct. Don't argue with them. They've been interpreted correctly today. I got out my short down here and got back long, um, and it, it has moved higher. And if you see no supply here, it probably will move higher as well. Well, it may, it, Donald, it may well get up to the 8480 area again, but be aware that your counter trend trading, if you're long, you're against all the big trends. But it, it, it definitely is going up, and that is a spring, no doubt about it. Uh, David, I'll put this online on YouTube probably later on this afternoon. Uh, Louis, no, we, we don't do a schedule for the Trading the Markets um, a live trading room each week because I don't know on a Sunday night which days I'm going to do it because I look at the charts 
and react to the chart, but we usually give you 24 hours notice, so you do get notice. But I'm looking at the news, I'm looking at the principles. Today, I decided to do the live trading room because there were clear principles on the Aussie, and there's clear principles on the Aussie at the moment as well, we can see them. So that's the reason we do it. But we, we react very much to the market. We, we don't try and schedule it in advance. Yeah. Uh, for if you've just joined Trading the Market yesterday, and welcome to you, you will get an email from us later on this evening with the, uh, the link to tomorrow's live trading session. It's going to be a little later. It's going to be at 2 p.m. UK time. Okay, oh, this is moving higher. So there we go. Good. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed it. And remember, the coupon code is BLACK, uh, John, you asked. It's just very easy. B-L-A-C-K, BLACK. And you type that coupon code in, you'll get 50% discount on any of our products. Take care. God bless everyone. Have a great rest of your trading week. And I'll see all of our Trading the Markets members in the room tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, look forward to it. And remember, ignore the signals at your peril. Take care. Bye-bye.